Hi everybody, uh, this is Dr. Claire, and this is my friend Wallace the Gecko. And today we are going to be demonstrating um, how you would have collected data for this experiment um, if we weren't in the coronavirus. So Wallace is gonna be my somewhat unwilling subject. Keep pulling him out. And um, he, uh, uh, we're going to measure his uh, metabolic rate. Um, so I'm gonna show you how to do that. So let's get started. All right, everybody, here's our experimental setup. So um, what we've got going on here is this, we have this uh, plastic, whoa, buddy. Sorry, my gecko is escaping. Uh, this plastic uh, metabolic chamber here. Um, that's where we're gonna actually put Wallace to measure his metabolic rate. Um, and then this is wrapped in a uh, heat pad to get it warm. I'm giving you guys the example of a warm environment. If we were actually doing this experiment, um, you'd be comparing uh, animals in a cold environment, at room temperature, and in a warm environment. So I've been warming this up already. So the chamber, this is a little um, device that allows me to measure both temperature and the amount of carbon dioxide in the chamber. And so our temperature has gotten up to about 29.8 degrees. I'm shooting for 30, so we're almost there. Um, so if we were actually doing this experiment, each group would have either a gecko or a mouse. Now remember, mice are endotherms, geckos are ectotherms. So they regulate their temperature differently and will be expected to respond to different temperature environments differently. And then uh, for the cold environment, we would put these metabolic chambers in an ice bath. For the warm environment, we would use these heat pads and room temperature would just be room temperature. So the first thing we need to do is actually weigh our animal. And Wallace is pretty active right now, so I'll see if I can get him to cooperate. I got a little scale here. So we're gonna weigh Wallace. And he weighs 68 grams. Um, so let's just see if he'll just hang out in the scale. Nope. He's being very, very active. Um, so, okay, we've gotten up to 30 degrees, so we're ready to start measuring his metabolic rate. Um, so remember, cellular metabolism. When, you, when an animal is going through cellular me metabolism, they're breaking down sugars, and uh, they use oxygen to do that, and a byproduct of that um, meta metabolic process is carbon dioxide. So this little thing here is actually a carbon dioxide sensor. So we're going to measure the carbon dioxide in this chamber as Wallace sits in there. All right, so uh, hold on just a second. I gotta put him down and open this up. So I put a little paper towel in the bottom of the chamber, Wallace, no escaping, um, to keep his toes from getting too hot because um, I don't want him to be uncomfortable. So we're gonna put him in here. He actually usually likes the warmth and we're gonna go ahead and, and cover this up. And we're going to put in our carbon dioxide sensor. All right, so now this is a sealed chamber. We're still measuring the temperature. Oh, and we've gotten a little bit too warm. We're up to 31. So I'm actually going to take him off the heating pad so that his temperature stays right around 30. And we're going to start recording data. All right, so what this, uh, what this unit is going to do is it's going to take a measurement every two seconds of the temperature and a measurement every two seconds of the carbon dioxide in the chamber. So as he uh, goes through metabolism and he breathes out that carbon dioxide, we're going to expect that carbon dioxide level to go up. And that's what you can see starting to happen here. So I'm going to go ahead and pause the video while I collect the data. Okay, so we've finished collecting our data. I've collected five minutes of data. Um, and then I took the temperature probe and the carbon dioxide sensor out because I didn't want to keep uh, Wallace in that airtight container for more than five minutes. Um, so he's just going to chill in there while I finish explaining what, what we have going on here. So here's our data. Um, so you can see that uh, there's some variation uh, over time. That has to do with Wallace just moving around the chamber and like breathing on the probe or not breathing on the probe. But that blue line at the bottom there, that's the carbon dioxide levels in the chamber. So you can see it's gradually going up as he goes through cellular metabolism and produces carbon dioxide as a byproduct. Um, on that upper uh, 
graph in red. Um, you see the temperature, I started out a little bit higher than I wanted to, so I let it drop back down to around 30 degrees, and then I went ahead and put it back on the uh, heating pad to try and keep it right close to 30 throughout the, the um, experiment. So now what we're going to do is we want to uh, measure um, the rate of carbon dioxide production. So this uh, little device will actually do that for us. So if we go up here to analyze uh, and we do curve fit and we choose carbon dioxide um, and then we're going to choose a linear fit and that's going to fit a line to our data. Um, this line um, is going to give us the, uh, the slope, among other things, it'll give us the slope uh, of the data. So remember from algebra, y equals mx plus b. Remember, m is your slope and b is your intercept. So um, the slope here is representing the change in carbon dioxide over time. Um, and this is in minutes. So um, as Wallace was in the chamber, he was producing 2.55 parts per million of carbon dioxide per minute, okay? So that is his, uh, the amount of carbon dioxide he is producing. Now we need to change this from uh, a, an, a number that is unique to Wallace to a more general metabolic rate. So you can imagine if I had a smaller lizard and I put him in this chamber, it would probably produce less carbon dioxide because the smaller lizard would have less tissue. So we actually have to change this to calculate the metabolic rate by dividing by Wallace's weight. So if you remember, um, at the beginning there, uh, Wallace weighed 68 grams. So in order to calculate his metabolic rate at 30 degrees Celsius, I would take 255 and I would divide that by 68 grams. And that would give us his metabolic rate. So what you're going to get from your TA is data from last year's class. And you're going to have data from mice and data from geckos. And um, each group did a single animal at a single temperature. And then we compiled the data from the entire class. So what you're going to see um, with your data is that you'll have mouse data and you'll have gecko data. And um, the, you'll have it for the three different temperatures. So you'll have it for uh, approximately uh, 5 to 10 degrees Celsius for around 22 degrees Celsius, and for around 30 degrees Celsius, 5 to 10 is, is those animals that were on ice. Um, the 22 is about room temperature in, in our labs on campus. And then uh, the, the 30 degrees is with the heating pad. Um, and then you can look at how the metabolic rate of these different animals changes um, depending on the temperature of their environment. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to email me or email your TAs. Um, and uh, I hope you guys are doing well.